to the Journey Shake Chem. Well, today we're learning how to do complete redox reactions in acidic solution. I know you're excited. Well, we'll start out with the warm up today and we'll move on and use that. So please do the best you can and I'll see you in a moment. In number one, we are determining all of the oxidation numbers of each one of the elements. And then we're also going to, from that information, determine which element is oxidized and which element is reduced. Well, when I look at permanganate, oxygen is in the negative position and therefore it is negative two. There are four of them and that gives me a negative eight. The whole permanganate polyatomic ion has a negative one charge and therefore, in this case, manganese is plus seven and oxygen was minus two. Iodine, the diatomic molecule, is a compound. It's a molecule, and therefore it is zero. Hydrogen is here in order to let us know that we are in an acidic solution. We have hydrogen ions for acidic solutions and hydroxide ions in basic solution. But first we're going to learn how to do acidic solution, and when we become comfortable with that, we'll move on to the basic solutions. And manganese here is obviously plus two. Iodine, we are going to determine. Oxygen has a negative two charge. It's in the negative position. There are three of them. That gives me a negative six. The whole polyatomic ion is negative one, and therefore iodine is plus five. Now, what has happened is that the Manganese has gone from plus seven to plus two. And electrons have a negative charge. Therefore, when we have a positive charge, that means we lost electrons. Well, we went from losing seven to only having lost two, and therefore I gained two, five electrons. I gained five electrons. And I have a little abbreviation of red for reduced. It's a little shortness there. And then iodine has gone from zero to plus five, and that means that it lost five electrons and was oxidized, and my abbreviation for that is ox. And that is number one. Now, num I'll be right back to do number two. In number two, we are also determining all of the oxidation numbers of every element. And then also we'll determine what element is oxidized and which element is reduced. Well, this is a compound and oxygen is in the negative position and therefore it follows its periodic position. And there are four of them, each one negative two. That gives me a negative eight and this is a compound and therefore it is zero. There are two nitrogens and in this case, nitrogen is plus four. Oxygen is negative two. In this case, we are talking about a polyatomic ion, and oxygen is negative two. There are seven of them, that gives me a negative 14, and the whole polyatomic ion has an overall charge of negative two. There are two chromiums, and therefore each chromium is plus six, and oxygen is negative two. The hydrogen is here to indicate that we are in an acidic solution. In nitrate, oxygen is negative two. There are three of them, giving me a negative six. And the whole polyatomic ion has a negative one charge. And therefore, in this case, nitrogen is plus five. And chromium is plus three there. Now, when I look at the charge changes, which is what makes a redox reaction a redox reaction, we are going from plus four to plus five on the nitrogen. And therefore, we have lost one electron. And it was oxidized. The chromium went from plus six to plus three, and therefore it gained three electrons and was reduced. And we can see also when, we are, when something is reduced, the number, the oxidation number, also goes down and is reduced. So that helps you remember that what reduction is. Now we're going to learn how to balance this complete reaction by the half reaction method. And I'll be right back to show you how to do that.
In acidic solution, there are three things that we are allowed, and that's all that we're allowed to add to balance half reactions. And we have had this before, but let's review again. In an acidic solution, I'm only allowed to add water, hydrogen ions, and electrons. That is all I am allowed to add in order to balance the half reactions. Well, where I see that the element has changed, I pull that out, the ones that are connected by the brackets, and that is my half reaction that I need to balance independently before I put them back together for the complete reaction. That's why we call it the half reaction method. And therefore, here I have MnO4, that this was a minus one, we knew that, and we go to Mn plus two. Now, the first thing I want to take care of is the charge, and it changed from plus seven to plus two. We gained five electrons. And when we gain electrons, we put those electrons on the left side in order to balance the charge. And by adding these five electrons, then I have a plus two on both sides of the equation. Now, I need four oxygens, and the only thing that has oxygen in it that I'm allowed to use is water, and therefore I will add four waters. Well, as soon as I add four waters, I need eight hydrogen ions to make that balanced. And then that half reaction is balanced. Then I pull out the next bracket. I have iodine that goes to iodate. Now here it is extremely important that you notice that there are two atoms of iodine here and only one atom of iodine here and therefore I must put a coefficient in front to get those two iodine atoms. This is going to change the number of oxygens that I have so it's critical that you watch out for that. And I lost not just five electrons because this is for one atom. I lost ten total electrons and losers are produced. Losers are on the right. So we add our 10 electrons to balance the charges. And then I need six waters to get these six oxygens. When I add the six waters, I'm going to need 12 hydrogen ions. And then this half reaction is also balanced. Now before I can add them together, I have to have the same number of electrons gained as there are lost. And therefore I'm gonna multiply the top equation by two. I have to multiply everything in there by two. And therefore I'm going to get 16 hydrogen ions, 10 electrons, two permanganate ions, two manganese ions, and eight waters. Then I can add them back together. And just like in math, things on the opposite sides I subtract and things on the same side I will add. So before I add them together, I'm going to look. On this side I have 16 hydrogens and here I have 12. So all 12 of these will cancel and this will leave me with four hydrogen ions. The electrons must always completely cancel. And then the six waters cancel and leaves me with two waters here. And then I can add them back together. And the things on the same side I bring down. I have four hydrogen ions, and iodine, and two permanganate ions, and I get two manganese ions, and two iodates, and two waters. And I also need to always make sure that these are in the lowest ratio. And because I have a one here, then it does not, I cannot reduce these numbers. And therefore, that is my final answer for number one. This was the equation that we had in number one. And I'll be right back to do number two. Let's do the second warm-up together and balance the complete reaction by the half reaction method. Well, we had these charges, we've gone through this, so we already had this, and then I pull out the ones that are connected by the brackets. I don't worry about this hydrogen because it'll come back. This is only to indicate that we are in an acidic solution. Well, N2O4 is going to NO3. And there are two nitrogens here, critical to notice that. And therefore I put two in front here. Now, 
the charge has lost one electron for one atom, and therefore I have lost a total of two electrons. There are six oxygens here and only four here, and therefore I must add two waters. And when I add these two waters, I'm going to need four hydrogen ions. And then that half reaction is balanced. Then I attack the dichromate and I get chromium ions. Well, again, we have two atoms of chromium here and therefore I need a coefficient of two to get those two atoms. So I gain not just three electrons, but I gained six electrons total. Then I need seven waters to get the seven oxygens. And also I need 14 hydrogens to balance those waters. And it's critical that you put the charges on things. They're not ions without their charges. And we always need to see the charge on the atom. Now, before I can add them back together, I have to have the same number of electrons gained as there are lost because redox reactions are all about transferring electrons. And therefore I need to multiply this one by three to get six electrons that are lost and then I rewrite it. It's very important that you rewrite them rather than trying to scribble and erase and put new numbers in because it gets very confusing sometimes if you do that. So I have six waters here and three in 204 and six nitrates and six electrons and 12 hydrogen ions. Then things on the opposite sides of the arrow can be subtracted. Things on the same side are added. And I see here that I'm going to be left with two hydrogens and these cancel completely. My electrons must cancel completely. And then these waters cancel and it leaves me with one water. And then I just add them back together. Two halves make a whole. And so I have two hydrogen ions, dichromate ions, three in 204s, I get six nitrates, two chromium ions, and one water. It's in the lowest ratio, and therefore I can just have that as my final answer. Now you will be practicing these this evening. You have eight of them to do, and we will have a quiz coming up that will only have half reactions in acidic solution. So we'll practice these, you'll get good at them, and so that quiz should not be very challenging for you. You'll do really well on that. Well, that was some fun, and now you know how to balance a redox reaction by the half reaction method in acidic solution. Well, thanks for being here, and I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Bye.